Am I the asshole for fake sleeping all night to see if my wife is lying? The past couple of months, my wife has been complaining about our cats. She's been claiming that the cats wake her up constantly and that she's frustrated every night that she has to get up and open the door for the cats. Or the cats keep making noises or the cats keep jumping on her. It got me to the point where she started saying she wants me to get rid of them. I've told her I've never seen or heard any of this, but she claims I sleep through it all. She kept telling me that she was getting less and less sleep and kept acting aggressive, blaming lack of sleep from the cats and that if I didn't get rid of them, she'd leave me. I legitimately started considering giving the cats to my sister until I noticed something. One morning, she claimed she had gotten up multiple times throughout the night to help the cats. She listed a bunch of times. I thought it was weird because I had been up until 4 a.m. and she claimed that she got up at 1 a.m. to open the door for them and a few times around 3 a.m. because they were meowing and jumping on her. I was in the bedroom the entire time while she slept and I know none of this happened. Things weren't adding up so I decided to run a test. I waited until she said she was going to bed, then I let the cats out of our bedroom. I lowered my phone brightness and faked going to sleep. I just laid there in my bed for the entire night, bored, but I definitely did not fall asleep. I made sure to make timestamps every 30 minutes on my phone through Discord just to be sure. I marked down every noise my cats made. One cat had jumped down from something and made a little noise around 3.18 a.m. and one ate food relatively quietly by the bedroom door at 4.57 a.m. Other than that, nothing happened. Sure enough, my wife slept from 11 p.m. until 9 a.m. and that morning she claimed she had woken up at least seven times to open doors from the cat noises and cats jumping on her. At this point, I was pissed because she was clearly lying to me. I was exhausted and fed up with the lies, so I bluntly called her out on it. I told her, that's funny, I stayed up all night to monitor the cats and they weren't even in the room at all last night. I have timestamps and everything, so you've been lying to me and trying to convince me to get rid of my cats? Why? She just sat there quietly shaking and looking pissed, then got up and left without answering. She came back hours later and ignored me whenever I talked, and when I asked her how I'm the bad guy in the situation, she finally said that I was treating her like a child by lying about sleeping and staying up all night just to see if she was lying or not. And that making timestamps and everything as if I was an investigator was going too far and makes me an obsessive asshole. I did it because she was threatening to make me get rid of the cats or she'd leave me. And her claims didn't add up. So am I the obsessive asshole here? Story time about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. My best friend and I had known each other for almost seven years. We met in college and she was always dating around and had several boyfriends. I had no boyfriends because my parents were super strict even though I was in college. There was only one boy that I really liked, but like I said, my parents were super strict so I could never date anyone. What's worse is that I know this boy had a crush on me too. Fast forward five years later, my best friend and I are living together. She's on Tinder, Bumble, and all these other dating apps. She had been going on several days because she really wanted to find a relationship. Well, one day she comes home and she says that she really liked this guy she went on a date with. They ended up dating a month before I even met him. One day she invites him over because she wanted me to meet him. He comes in and as soon as we lock eyes, I'm in shock. It's the boy that I had a crush on in college. Which, like I said, I knew he had a crush on me too. We hugged and chatted for the entire night. And I could tell my best friend really liked him. A few days later, he he starts following me on Instagram and we start DMing. He tells me that he had a crush on me in college and I tell him that I did too. Part 2 is up. My best friend's boyfriend starts DMing me on Instagram. He confesses that he had a crush on me when we were in college together. And I told him that I did too. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. From that day on, he would DM me every single day and we would just flirt back and forth. I started feeling really, really guilty and I told him one day, I can't do this anymore. That's when he told me he also felt guilty and that the best thing was for us to stop talking. So we did. I was so sad. A few weeks passed by and my best friend asked me if she could have the apartment all to herself because she's planning a romantic dinner for him. I said yes, but I felt so jealous. Left the apartment because I realized that I was so in love with him. I went to the supermarket and ate a whole pack of Oreo cookies and went to the movies. I get a text message from my best friend asking me to come home immediately. My stomach sank and I thought she had found out. When I get there, she's crying and she says that he broke up with her. I asked if he said why and she said because he was in love with another woman. My stomach sank again. I was there with her the entire night while she cried knowing her boyfriend left her because of me. My best friend's boyfriend had broken up with her because of me. I didn't have the heart to tell her. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. A few days later, she started going out on Tinder dates again. I could see that she was feeling better, so I decided to confess to her everything. And she told me she could tell that he and I liked each other. Then she told me I should date him. Well, I didn't waste any time. I sent him a text message and asked him if he wanted to meet up for dinner. And when we did, he asked me to be his girlfriend. We did it for six months before he proposed. He even got my name tattooed on his neck. The only problem is that my mom thinks he might do the same thing to me. I don't even want to think about that because I truly believe that he loves me. But let's hope not. I've been planning the wedding and I asked my best friend to come. Of course she said yes. She's super happy for me. And she actually has a boyfriend now. Do you guys think my fiance will end up doing the same thing to me? Am I the asshole for marrying my sister's baby daddy? I, 36 year old female, and my sister, 29 female, got pregnant when she was 18 years old. I am infertile and knew I couldn't have kids, so when my sister said she was giving her baby up for adoption, I decided to be her mom. My sister went no contact five months after giving birth. 
For a bit of background, my sister got pregnant by a one-night stand and she apparently didn't remember or know the father at the time of birth. But when my daughter V was born, a man T, 35, messaged me on social media claiming to be the father of my child. My sister had run into him at a club and drunkenly confessed to the pregnancy. We met up, he bonded with his daughter, and well, that man is now my husband of seven years. Coming back to my sister, she called me yesterday. Although I was surprised at her call, I picked up. We made some small talk and then she said she had just gotten married a year back and both of them wanted children but couldn't because her husband was infertile but really wanted kids. I asked her if she wanted to adopt and she said no, she just wanted her baby back. I was speechless for a few moments before replying that if she wants to meet my child as an aunt, she is welcome to and we can both sit V down and explain the reason for her absence but she can't just ask me to give up my child. My sister said she'll sue me as she is the birth mother. I told her she was out of her mind and then I told her how I married the baby daddy, T. She exploded, calling me names and saying I stole her life. My husband came home from work and when I explained to him, he was beyond furious. I then got a call from my parents saying I was an asshole for telling my sister she's not allowed to see her baby. I never said that and I welcomed her to bond with V but they refused to listen and said I was being insensitive and harsh and flaunting my family. I now feel bad because my sister and I were very close growing up and I feel quite close to her situation since I know the struggles of infertility. My husband said there was no way he was letting my sister have full time alone with V and I agree but I want to know if I'm the asshole for being too harsh and telling her about T. Story time of how I made my high school bullies dad my sugar daddy. Freshman year wasn't the best time for me. I wasn't the most popular or best looking girl at school. I was really shy and instead of trying to make friends and talk to people, I kept to myself. Most people let me do my own thing, but then there was a girl named Claire. I don't know what I ever did to this girl, but she made my life miserable every chance she got. Making fun of my looks and putting me down in front of others was almost a daily ritual for Claire. My mom didn't have a lot of money, so I couldn't afford the cool clothing brands and styles I were in. Claire would call me out for being poor and say I got all my clothes from Goodwill, all while laughing. One day at lunch, she smacked the tray out of my hands as I was passing by and food got all over me. This resulted in the whole cafeteria staring and laughing at me. Fast forward to the end of senior year and I had a major glow up. I was more confident, people started noticing me, and I had a lot of friends. I figured it was time to start dating, but I didn't really like anyone at school, so I downloaded a dating app. I matched with a handsome older guy who was looking for a sugar baby. I looked him up on Instagram to see more pictures and saw Claire in one of his photos. Upon further inspection, I discovered that this man was her recently divorced dad. I immediately messaged him. Part 2 of how I made my high school bully's dad my sugar daddy. I began chatting back and forth with Claire's dad through the dating app. He was twice my age, but he was handsome and given the circumstances, I had to give this my best shot. He told me he was looking for a beautiful girl to spoil and spend time with and made it very clear that he was interested in me. After talking for a few weeks, we set up our first date which was dinner at a nice restaurant followed by shopping. I knew this man had money because I remember Claire being one of the rich girls at school and I was right. He took me to the Louis store and let me pick out any bag I wanted. We kept talking and it was working out really nicely for me. He would send me money every week for makeup, to get my nails and hair done, or for whatever else I needed in between dates. One week, he said he couldn't go on our usual Saturday night outing because his daughter was coming over for dinner. I was not going to waste this opportunity. I told him how much I was looking forward to seeing him and asked if I could join them. He was hesitant at first, but I eventually talked him into it. I'll never forget the look on Claire's face when I walked in and kissed her dad. I showed Claire the new purse that her dad had bought me and bragged about how well he's always treating me. She was fuming and stormed out shortly after. To this day, he's still my sugar daddy and Claire hates everything about it. Story time about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on an all-girls trip. So a little background information, I was 14 or 15 around the time and it was the summer of my freshman year. So within the last few weeks of my 8th grade year, the more popular boys asked me out and we're gonna call him Carson. I wasn't like super popular at the school but I was like a medium maybe but I was raised in a super strict household where the only phone that I pretty much had was one that was able to call 911 and my parents and I especially was not allowed to be talking to boys. So Carson had the great idea of giving me his old phone and throughout the summer I would text him on there. Well, I started to realize him getting really toxic. Anytime that he would see my Snapchat location change, he would be like, where are you going? Why didn't you tell me you were going here? So I started distancing myself a little bit from him. Also because our relationship was just moving way too fast. Within the first month of us dating, he was talking about wanting to marry me. Like for part two. Part two about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on him on an all-girls trip. So like I said, I started distancing myself from him because he became too attached and was just way too toxic. Well, I was also in a lot of clubs in school, and a few of them would require me to go on trips. Well, the one that I went on was an all-girls trip, and before I left, I texted Carson letting him know that I wouldn't have my phone all week. Well, on the last night of my trip, there was a girls and boys dance. There was like a group of boys from a different school that we were meeting up with, and I tried staying back at the cabin, but they wouldn't let me. So we started doing dances that required partners. So I was pretty much forced to dance with one of the boys. 
Well, when I came back home, I got a hundred texts from Carson calling me a bunch of nasty names, and you can probably guess them. And somebody got a picture of me dancing with one of the boys. And Carson sent it to me and said, we're done. So after that, I just ignored him. And then literally that night at 1 a.m., he was texting me saying, I miss you. Please come back to me. Like for part part three about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on him on an all-girls trip. So like I said, I received over 100 messages from him. He got a picture of me dancing with one of the boys and said, we're done. And then at one in the morning, he's like, I miss you so much. Please don't leave me. Like I've been doing so bad while you were gone. So of course I didn't accept his apology and I just blocked him on all my social media. And the next day I wake up to messages on my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Facebook. Like who even uses that? Unless you're talking to family. Well, then Carson decides to tell everybody at my school about how I'm a lying, cheating scumbag. And now, three years later, no good guy from my school wants to date me. So now whenever I'm talking to a guy, I have to make sure that they're not affiliated with Carson in any way. But low-key, I had a really good glow up, so all the hot boys want to talk to me now. And Carson's pretty much still a scumbag. This story was submitted to me by a follower who would like to remain anonymous. When I was 14, I had a best friend named Lucy. And we had one of those friendships where we were really close really quickly. Which I now know is a red flag and usually a sign of a toxic friendship. But I was too young to know this then. Our favorite thing to do together was hang out at the mall. Our parents would let us go alone as long as we abided to one rule. We had to stay together at all times. And we were always pretty good about that. One night we were having a sleepover at Lucy's house and her uncle Mike came over for dinner. Uncle Mike was pretty loud and goofy. He showed us like eight magic tricks that night. I liked him. He was fun. But as I was helping clear dishes after dinner i overheard mike and lucy's mom having a hushed conversation in the kitchen she was like you've had too much to drink why don't you just spend the night so mike ended up sleeping over that night too right before going to sleep lucy's mom came into the bedroom and she told us to remember to shut the bedroom door before falling asleep when i asked lucy why she said that lucy just shrugged and said i don't know but we made sure the bedroom door was shut just like she asked in the middle of the night i woke up to the feeling of someone tickling my feet so I was having a sleepover at Lucy's house and I woke up in the middle of the night to someone or something tickling my feet. I scream and then I hear shuffling. Lucy wakes up and she's like, what's wrong? And I tell her that something was tickling my feet, but she doesn't believe me. I'm like, well, why is the door open? We shut it before we went to sleep. And she goes, relax. Sometimes it happens because there's a draft in the house. And I tell her that I think it was her uncle who was tickling my feet and she goes, oh, come on, you're hallucinating. And honestly, at the time, I had a bad feeling about Lucy's reaction. It felt like she was gaslighting me and I had no idea why. A few weekends later, Lucy and I are chilling at the mall on a Saturday after Afternoon. My parents let us go to the mall together alone, but their one rule is that we have to stay together the whole time. They call it the buddy system. So that day, Lucy's acting weird. She keeps looking around nervously and checking her phone. She says she has to go to the bathroom, and I'm like, okay, I'll go with you. Because we always go together, even if the other person didn't have to pee. And Lucy's like, no, I'll go alone. I'll be quick. And I'm like, no, I'll just go with you. And she snaps really aggressively, and she's like, just stay here. And then she spins around and sprints away from me. So Lucy's running away from me in the mall. I sprint after her. She's super fast. She rounds a corner, and then I can't find her after that. I start crying. Crying. I have no idea why my best friend ran away from me. So I sit down on a bench in the mall. I'm still crying, really overwhelmed. Then I hear someone say my name. So I look up and it's Lucy's uncle, Uncle Mike. He asks what's wrong and I tell him. He's being super nice and comforting. And then he starts rubbing my back, which made me uncomfortable, but I don't say anything. Then he offers to give me a ride home. And I say, no, I can just call my parents. And he goes, just let me give you a ride. Come on. But the way he said it the second time gave me goosebumps. It was aggressive. Like he wasn't asking me, he was telling me. So I stand up and step away from him and say, you're making me uncomfortable. I'm calling my parents. Mike glares at me, and then he says, no one likes a tease, and he walks away. I told my parents what happened, and they immediately called Lucy's parents. Apparently, Uncle Mike had taken a liking to me, and he found out that I was going to be at the mall that day with Lucy, and Mike paid her $100 to run away and leave me alone with him. He told Lucy that I liked him too, and that she was being a good friend by giving us alone time. I never spoke to Lucy again after that.
time about me being the toxic best friend. So my best friend was dating this guy for about a year and a half. And for the past six or seven months, she would say that she wasn't happy, she didn't like how she was being treated, but she couldn't leave him. Well, at this time they lived together, and that night we were supposed to decorate her apartment for her birthday party. So since she was at work, she just told me to go over her house and start decorating until she got home. Well, who happened to be there but her shitty ass boyfriend? And him and I didn't really get along. Well, him and I were setting up and he was being super nice. Like, overly nice. Which really weirded me out. Well, later on after the party, my best friend was hammered, so we both put her to bed and started cleaning up. And we were both drunk and started flirting with each other. And then one thing led to another. And I did it with my best friend's boyfriend in her house. So for the next three months, we have like this secret relationship, like for part two. Part two to me being the toxic best friend. So like I said, him and I had this secret relationship for like three months straight. And I would always just go over to my best friend's house while she was working and see him then. Well, the one day she came home early from work. And she walked in on her boyfriend and I in her bed. So after that, she finally got the courage to leave her boyfriend. And now she's happily married. So I kind of saw it as I pushed her to do something that she knew she would never do. And after having my number blocked for like three years, she texts me and she says, I wanted to thank you for what you did. You showed me that I could leave my boyfriend and that you were actually just a terrible friend. But now I'm happy for her, she's living the best life that she can live, and I'm still with her ex-boyfriend. Story time about my toxic ex-friend group. So my freshman year, I had moved to a new high school. So right away, I started being friends with this group of girls, and they were super nice. And I was also friends with this group of guys. Well, since I was friends with both groups, we all started hanging out all the time, but only whenever I was there. The boys just didn't want to hang out with the other girls. And after a few months, the girls started acting really strange. So anytime that I would hang out with the boys and not invite them, they would ignore me for a whole week. Meaning they wouldn't talk to me in school, they wouldn't answer my messages, or anything like that. Not a single one of them. And also, anytime that we hung out, they would be like, oh, invite the boys. And it was like they never wanted to hang out with me. So the one night, one of the boys was throwing a party. And I was going and the girls asked if they could come, but they had drama with a lot of people so the boys didn't want them coming, but I invited them anyways. Like for part two. Part two to the toxic ex-friend group story time. So you know, I invited them to the party, they showed up, and they were being really rude and like standoffish the whole entire night. And these girls literally hated it whenever I would hang out with the boys or talk to the boys. Come to find out that every single one of the girls had a crush on every single one of the guys that were in my friend group. Also, I'm a very friendly person and will talk to anybody and they got pissed off whenever I was talking to anybody who wasn't them. So a little bit into the party, I start getting a lot of dirty looks from a lot of different girls that I've never even talked to. And this girl walks up to me and she's like, why have you been Snapchatting my boyfriend? And I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? She goes, a few of your friends told me that you like my boyfriend and that you've been Snapchatting him and trying to get with him. So then she calls the girls over from my friend group and goes, didn't she tell me this? And they're like, yeah, she tries to get with everybody's boyfriend. So after that, I got kicked out of both friend groups because they spread a bunch of lies and rumors about me. Story time about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on an all-girls trip. So a little background information, I was 14 or 15 around the time, and it was the summer of my freshman year. So within the last few weeks of my 8th grade year, one of the more popular boys asked me out. And we're gonna call him Carson. I wasn't like super popular at the school, but I was like a medium maybe. But I was raised in a super strict household, where the only phone that I pretty much had was one that was able to call 911 and my parents. And I especially was not allowed to be talking to boys. So Carson had the great idea of giving me his old phone, and throughout the summer, I would text him on there. Well, I started realize him getting really toxic. Anytime that he would see my Snapchat location change, he would be like, where are you going? Why didn't you tell me you were going here? So I started distancing myself a little bit from him. Also because our relationship was just moving way too fast. Within the first month of us dating, he was talking about wanting to marry me. Like for part two. Part two about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on him on an all-girls trip. 
So like I said, I started distancing myself from him because he became too attached and was just way too toxic. Well, I was also in a lot of clubs in school and a few of them would require me to go on trips. Well, the one that I went on was an all girls trip. And before I left, I texted Carson letting him know that I wouldn't have my phone all week. Well, on the last night of my trip, there was a girls and boys dance. There was like a group of boys from a different school that we were meeting up with. And I tried staying back at the cabin, but they wouldn't let me. So we started doing dances that required partners. So I was pretty much forced to dance with one of the boys. Well, when I came back home, I got a hundred texts from Carson calling me a bunch of nasty names, and you can probably guess them. And somebody got a picture of me dancing with one of the boys. And Carson sent it to me and said, we're done. So after that, I just ignored him. And then literally that night at 1 a.m., he was texting me saying, I miss you. Please come back to me. Like for part. Part three about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on him on an all-girls trip. So like I said, I received over a hundred messages from him. He got a picture of me dancing with one of the boys and said, we're done. And then at one in the morning, he's like, I miss you so much. Please don't leave me. Like I've been doing so bad while you were gone. So of course I didn't accept his apology and I just blocked him on all my social media. And the next day I wake up to messages on my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Facebook. Like who even uses that? Unless you're talking to family. Well, then Carson decides to tell everybody at my school about how I'm a lying, cheating scumbag. And now, three years later, no good guy from my school wants to date me. So now whenever I'm talking to a guy, I have to make sure that they're not affiliated with Carson in any way. But low-key, I had a really good glow up, so all the hot boys want to talk to me now. And Carson's pretty much still a scumbag. Story time about how my boyfriend and I got robbed for over $3,000. And I know someone's about to be like, $3,000 isn't even a lot of money. We were both teenagers and both saved up a year's worth of paychecks for this, so it was a lot of money to us. So my boyfriend and I were looking for a car that we could use for about a year or so. And we found this one guy on Facebook. And the car looked too good for the price that he was selling it at. But I got in contact, asked him if he would meet me somewhere. And then he started being super sketchy. He was like, well, I still have to do some work on it, so can you guys come to my house? So we drove an hour away to his place, and we pull up to this apartment, and we drive around a few times, and the car is nowhere to be seen. So he meets us outside, we go in his house, super nice, offered us drinks and everything, and then he goes, okay, can I have the money now? And we're like, well, we want to see the car. And he goes, you guys can see the car after you give me the money, I just don't want to get robbed. So we give him the money, and he goes to the back to count it, like for part two. Part two on my boyfriend and I. So he went to jail and had to do community service life for part three. Part three on my boyfriend and I getting robbed. So like I said, they said that he had a lot of gun charges. And so he went to jail. And I think he was only in there for six months because apparently he was only a teenager. <laughs> so after he got out, it was like time for him to start paying us back. And I was so happy that I didn't let my boyfriend handle it his own way. I feel like this was the best revenge or whatever he had to spend that whole summer doing community service to pay us back and it's not like a fine where you can just pay that money back like you actually have to do community service for that money or i'm pretty sure that's what the cops told us but the funniest thing is we actually saw him walking in the mall with his dad whenever we got one of the paychecks because we went shopping with it and we were walking right behind him and my boyfriend wanted to say something and you know i was like no we already got the money back you know like let's not do that